Okay, welcome to our winter wreath project. Um, pardon my schmutz on the table there. This is a project where you can take the holes that are drilled in here and you can attach different little um, banners that go across. This is the one for Christmas time. It's deck the halls. I've got little lights going around in front of him. We put him aside and we get our little snow buddies going on here. Okay, and so he, these guys are just little pals and they are for January. And then finally, and I put it down someplace, we've got our Valentine's one. So the last final month of winter is Valentine's and we've got our little lovebirds and it's home tweet home. So I hope you enjoy the project. It is a lot of fun and this is just a neat way to have something that marks each month, but you don't have to take down the big wreath and you can celebrate winter, but vary it and not keep the same thing up. Enjoy. Welcome to Home Tweet Home. I hope that you get, oh my goodness, I hope you love just silly fun because this is what this is. This is our little lovebirds in their little nest and it is our Valentine's version of our winter wreath and that's the end of winter. Um, but the lovebirds are nesting and they're super happy and cozy. Um, I've glued on different things with wire and all that kind of stuff and some extra raffia as well as painting and stuff. The techniques are fun. It's a pretty quick project. I think you're really going to enjoy it. With any MDF product, the first thing that you want to do is you want to seal all the sides. So I'm going to use multi-purpose sealer, which does a phenomenal job of sealing um, multiple surfaces. So I'll go ahead and I'll just use my big brush and I'll brush on a nice even thin coat. Okay, so when I'm stroking on my paint with a cut edge like this, I stroke away to the edge with, where my brush can flip off. And it's a cute little um, just quick tip to um, help you um, not have to do a lot of cleanup. Okay, so I'm going to take, um, I've got my board um, sealed, I'm going to take a 50-50, nope, a one um, ultra blue deep and three titanium white. And we're going to just mix that to a value five. And we'll go ahead and just roll it on. Now I'm going to roll towards my edge so that I don't end up with a lot of dripping. And we'll get one coat on there and let it dry. Okay, then we're going to re-roll. And while it's wet, then we'll slip slap in. So I'll come back to you as soon as I get this rolled. Okay, and then we are going to slip slap with just straight Ultra Blue Deep using our brush. A little bit of a mix. And right at the edges, I'm going to get up here and stand up right at the edges where things are going to get darker. We'll go ahead and just slip slap off. Make sure you're flipping to your edge. And then you want to blend it up through the middle. Got to kind of work quickly. The paint needs to stay wet and if you dry then go ahead and re-wet with your um, roller. Otherwise you're just base coating and you're not blending. that kind of blended. You can pick up your base color and blend back into it if you feel like things are kind of taken over. Okay then while we're still wet we pick up a little bit of Prussian blue and just deepen within that parameter. Once again, you can pick up the other color and blend into those. Okay, I'm blending in. Drag the ultra blue down. just tones down the edges, sinks everything in. Okay, and then we 
wherever we don't have a good blend, we can go back. Okay, I'm going to get on some nitrile gloves. And these will keep my hands clean because I'm going to use a sea sponge. Okay, now I've got a dampened sea sponge. I'm going to go into um, Indian turquoise. And I'm going to twist and pounce throughout there. And I don't want to make any kind of pattern. Okay, so you got to be really careful about the pattern. And twisting and pouncing and dragging and Schmudgeon is really good. Okay, get out there on the edge. Now we'll go into some Indian turquoise. And we want to just really kind of blend that. I'm tippling sideways and this way and that way and kind of making like a little kind of star path. I go back to it and blend by pushing and dragging. Go into the back end and just blend into those blues without any color, but it just messes up the the texture. And this is kind of like the frozen kind of look. Okay, and I think we might be able to go a little bit more with some white. We want to make sure our snowflakes show in the end, but I think we'll go just a little bit more with white. just kind of mess and meld everything together. I'll go back into a little bit of the desert turquoise. Okay. I think we've got a good look. I think we'll go ahead and let it dry. Okay, when choosing my colors for a project, I've made a book of colors that have all the deco art colors, and when they get discontinued, I put a D and scratch them out, but I keep them in the book, so if I need to match something that's called for in an old pattern, I know what the color looks like. So um, anyway, but when I'm looking for my colors, I want something that will retire on my for the snowflakes, something that'll settle back a little, so I need to be if you want something to be like the background, you need to make it be like the color of the background. So if you want it to disappear, you make it like the background. And these are just business cards. Um, sorry, I'm bopping around here. These are business cards, and they're in um, baseball card sleeves. Okay, so I'm looking for, these get into the concrete or the patio paints. I'm looking for my blue family, or my gray family. Okay, so I'm looking here, and winter blue might be a nice touch, so I'm going to take this out, and that might be just a little too blue. Kind of was thinking slate gray. Okay, so I tested both of the colors that I got out. I got Blue Haven and um, Winter Blue, and notice that this one is much more kind of a clearer color, and this is much more gray. I think I'm going to go with the gray for my background, um, my disappearing snowflakes. We need a paper towel and a big dome brush. Dome brushes are affordable and wonderful and you need them in many sizes. So they're cheap, cheap, cheap. So now what we're going to do is dry off all the paint over here and then we'll just scumble. And rub those on. And we'll make little soft, disappeary type snowflakes. Okay. 
Make sure you bring them off the edges. Some are going to be strong, some will be softer. Okay, so don't worry about um, like them all being the same. And by scumbling them, they end up being a little bit more transparent or a little bit more like a softer look. Fuzzier. Sometimes I just use the stencil how it lies. Okay, yeah, that's making a lovely kind of background effect. I want to be careful not to use too many of these really fine ones for the background because I don't think they'll show up very well. Oops, that would be really fuzzy. Pick up more paint. Dry it off your paper towel. I'm going to just spread snowflake awesomeness all over the place. If you want really clean lines when you're stenciling, then what you'll do is you'll use, um, you'll pounce and do that, and that will make them much more clean looking. Okay, then we're looking for repetition. We don't want to bring the same snowflakes in in the same positions everywhere, and we want to not have the same size as well. So we've got medium, medium, little, 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 medium, medium, medium. So we want to spread some littles in between our, our medium stuff. So maybe we can bring we don't want them to line up either, so let's bring this guy up to the edge. And this guy down here. Don't do that guy over here. Oops. So I've kind of moved a little bit away from using Tacket in the background when I don't need super clean. Um, because these are scumbly, I don't need to use a repositionable adhesive so it's just a step I don't need to do but if I want something to be perfect then I absolutely use the tack it over and over which is a repositionable adhesive and that didn't show up so I think I'll do one of these medium sized guys All right, now we got to make some dreamy happen. So we're going to take our dirty brush and load in some Indian turquoise. We're going to do this before we do the white snowflakes. And we want to kind of just make a trail of fluffy moving stuff. Don't want it to be like where you can tell exactly what's going on. Make it move around the piece. You can make it be wide in some places and skinny in others. Just want to kind of tone and soften that color down. Squint your eyes a lot. Okay, and that's making oh, that's making it really pretty. And that'll settle down all these snowflakes in the back. To just a little bit with the white. <clears throat> and that's dirty brush, which means our white is going to look like a lighter version of our Indian turquoise. And then we'll bring 
that skinnier. Then notice I'm going much faster. I just want to hit kind of the high points. I don't want to make like, too much of a walking trail. Okay, it's looking really nice and dreamy. Okay, now let's see if we can go. Let's see if we need some spatters first before we do snowflakes. Um, let's go spatters in white. Spattering my whole universe right here. Just walk it along the trail. kind of gives it just a little bit more startle. Let's go into our dark color. Okay, we're going to go ahead and spatter around the outer edge. If you spatter up high, it acts more like snow. And I think we'll go ahead and spatter with maybe with Indian turquoise as well. Looking for a very layered kind of look. Soft and layery. Okay, it's getting kind of magical. Okay, now we're going to stipple patting off on our, um, our paper towel. These are going to be more solid stencils. Let's take a look at how that looks. Yeah, I think that'll look really good. trying to decide if I want to have some sparkle on there. Let's see. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to use Glamour Dust Ultra Fine Glitter Paint in Ice Crystal. And we're going to, after we do the white, we'll go in with the Glamour Dust Glitter Paint. And this will make glittery snowflakes that will be kind of low-key. We can add some like uber awesome snowflakes after. Okay, so that'll dry kind of really beautiful. Okay, and then I'll repeat with other snowflakes around. Okay, I've kind of decided that I want to go a little bit overboard with my stencils, so I'm really kind of bringing them in from edges, and I'm going to go back and glitter some at the end. So I want to just kind of let it snow, let it snow, let it snow. Just really deepen those the different kinds. Don't have like stencils with like stencils. And that's really getting to be kind of snowy and awesome. And you can take, when your brush is kind of running out of paint, you can take a couple of really soft white ones to make it just be a little bit background, a little bit foreground. And they don't have to be full. It's just really going to fill up the area. Yeah, it's looking really good. Just 
just layer on them until you like it, I think. I think I like it. Okay, so now I've got my snowflakes about where I want them. I'm going to go back into my white. And I want to scumble a little bit more near my edge. don't want that edge to be quite so strong as it is. I want it to fade in just a little bit. Snowflakes, snowstorm. Yeah, I think that's a little bit better. I'm looking at my art to see how he's going to look on there and. Maybe we'll bring the blue, the Indian turquoise, out to our outer edge just a little bit. Here and there, just to soften some of those places. Framing is good, but if it's too dark, it'll be just too much. So I'll leave some of the points dark and then suck in some of it. Put your eyes. Yeah, that crystallizes things just a little bit better. Now into some white, aka light crystal or light Indian turquoise. And now let's do our dreamy thing just a little bit more. So make a little path. I'm kind of going high, low, high, low. Don't make polka dots. I think we can spatter one more time. some magic moments happening within our snowflakes. If you anchor and tap right above, it'll fall kind of right on the snowflakes. Okay, I've got six little snowflakes, and I'm going to use this wonderful mushroom sponge. This is um, multi-sided. I can use the big side. I can use the edge for um, trimming finials and dowels. I can use the bottom, and I can go ahead and... So what I'm going to do is load into some white. Just hold on to this edge. I've got a little bit of my um, Bahama Blue on my brushes, or my applicator as well. And I'll just tap and rotate and you've never base coated so easily in your whole entire life especially with all these little cut edges this makes it a snap and you can do big surfaces with it it comes in a set of two um, so you have multiple sizes it is a universally awesome piece of equipment okay when it's time I'm going to display my wreath in this stand okay so it's got a little a-frame kind of thing that stands up like that 
It's got a decorative top and a lovely bottom for it. Let me show you how the wreath looks. The wreath pops right on in there, and what's neat about it, the size is, and it would lean, of course, just a little bit, but it's enough for there to be a little bit of stuff at the top, and I like that a lot. And then our little guy is going to fit right in front here. Okay, so he'll hide the fact that there's a stand back there, and then I can put it on the tabletop in my family room, which is where I want it. So, I don't like the black color, though, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a product that um, it comes in three colors. It should be all three. It's called Glitter Blast, okay? So this is how you can spray paint something like iron or something like that and um, make it prettier or a different color. So I'm gonna use a white spray paint and then I'm gonna cover it with the glitter um, stuff so that I get a wintry kind of look. And then I can use this in the spring with my more um, white Easter ornaments and things like that. Okay, I think I can dig a little snowflake action with some. We're gonna put Snow Riders on one side Okay, and just kind of drip it around. Don't put it everywhere, put it like it just hit the edge of the thing. And then we'll use our bead and glitter glue to bring that down from there so it's not going to be white, it's just going to be kind of a clear color. And I'm going to sprinkle, I've got my little needle nose applicator, I'm going to sprinkle some glamour dust on one side and some crushed glass glitter, and it's not really glass, um, on the other. And then that's going to make these really cute little snowflakes that we can kind of layer in and out, and that'll give it a little bit more dimension. Okay, I've added rhinestones, my um, glittery little dudes, and some wonderful um, crushed glass glitter in the background. And the way we're going to put on the crushed glass glitter is we're going to remove all the other hoosies. Actually, I think I'm going to glue down my rhinestones how I have them right now. I'm just going to use the bead and glitter glue, and I'll just put a little mound underneath, and it dries clear, so that'll be perfect for them. I've got these awesome little tools that will you just squeeze them together, and they just pick those up, and you can just push down on it. A little bit like opposite of what you think so it takes a little getting used to. Anyway, so I can just pick them up, take them away, put my glue down, and then put them back. Pretty cool stuff. Whoops, don't do that. Yeah. Alright, to get my varnish to stick where I want it to stick, I'm going to use um, ultra matte varnish. And the reason I'm going to do this is because I haven't got I don't want it to resist in a sheen, so I don't want to see where I've put my varnish. So I want it to be like invisible varnish, if that makes any sense at all. So I'm going to put some of that down, and then I'm going to take my crushed glass glitter. I'm just going to drizzle it where I put my varnish. And some of it's going to fall off and some of it's going to stick, but I'm not going to worry about it. And it looks so cool. Okay, I just wanted you to see how cool, I don't know if you can see the reflection or not, but this, it's got this beautiful glittery sheen that's all over and it doesn't crumble off and stuff. And it is going to look awesome with my wreath and it'll be photographed that way. So, um, great way to learn how to um, transform your metal pieces. Right, we're going to seal our surface first of all with multi-purpose sealer. I'm going to use a mushroom sponge. The mus mushroom sponge is designed to be used on the skinny side on the edge if you have like round finials to paint or on the fat edge and because it's thick enough um, it keeps your hands out of the goop. See how much and it gives you a little handle. It's really really cool. So I'm going to use it just like I would a dome brush or a stippling brush for um, base coating and I'm going to mix my base coat in with it just a little bit. And then because I'm doing a cut piece, what I want to do is kind of just stamp and then wipe. And what I like about using a sponge as an applicator is that it controls. Do you see how sheer that is? If you use a brush, it tends to leave ridges and scoops and all that kind of stuff. So using a sponge as an applicator for varnish or for base coating is excellent. Okay, I'm going to use my acrylic bridge, which has just this little one-inch sized um, lift to it, 
And because it's clear, I can see through, and I, I can, um, instead of having something blocking my point of view, I can see through as I'm going. It's a brilliant, brilliant, wonderful thing to have. Okay, now I'm going to be crackling in here, so I want to crackle my birdhouse. Okay, so we're just going to go up, and it doesn't matter what stroke um, direction I go with the crackle medium, I just want it super thin. Okay, so the medium has to go on thin, but the paint on top goes on super thick. If you want big cracks, that is. Okay, so we'll get the whole birdhouse done, because I want it cracked everywhere. If you didn't want it cracked everywhere, then you could just leave, you know, splotches uncracked. And I'll just go down to the base. Remember, nice thin application, so spread that stuff out. And if you see it kind of pulling back and beating up, just smooth it out. Otherwise, you end up with um, crackle that is like blobbed and it's not attractive. This is the kind of crackle medium that is uh, medium um, driven, meaning that I could put this crackle medium on here and I could leave it for three years, come back to it, and it's still going to disagree, meaning it'll crack my paint. So there is crackle medium that is time-based, and so you have to read your directions when you have your crackle medium to make sure that you are um, you're in the, the right. If you miss the time parameter and the time-based crackles, then you don't get a chance to do it again, and you have to reapply. Now I also want um, some crackle medium on my fence as well. So I'll go ahead and do that while I'm here. All right, we're going to apply our weathered wood. And the way you apply the weathered wood is you want to do it in the direction you want it to crack. Okay, so I'm going to scoop up, because I want it to crack really big, scoop up my neutral gray. And, yeah, I'll just go ahead and... You don't want to overstroke it, so I can, I can stroke like once or twice, and then I have to get out of there. But it's got to be thick enough to base coat or it won't give you the effect that you want. The more you stroke on it, the more um, fine the cracks will be. Okay, so I'm going to wipe that out. And then this is going to be a little bit trickier because I don't want to glom my paint down in there. So I'm going to have to just go ahead and wipe it on a little at a time. My vision of these little birds is that they are, maybe they're not living in the most, like, modern atmosphere and that, you know, maybe their fence is a little bit raggedy and their birdhouse is not perfect, but they've got each other and so that's what they're all about. <clears throat> all you need is love. So, just get that on there and then I'll let it crack according to its will and you can see it's already crackling right there. Okay, I've got a piece of wide tape and I've put it down here on my non-stick mat, which doesn't make much sense. But I'm going to use three colors of pink. I've got more than three out here, but I'm just going to, um, I'm not going to use this raspberry color. And I just want to apply a base, different levels. And I've got them on the piece of tape so that the tape will um, hold them down. Okay, now I'll blot that out and I'll go into this mauve color. And we'll go into this deep mauve. I'm wondering if we need to do a couple in turquoise. This may not be the way, but um, I've got a few extra here so I'm okay with that. See if I can neutralize the paint in this dauber. Yeah, I think that's a kind of a fun little thing. Now I'll wait, I'll move these over and I'll wait until they dry and then I'll turn them over and I'll do the back sides. Alright, I've mixed a little of my driftwood with my um, base coat brown and we're gonna, I'm going to stay out of this area but I've got to hold it down. And just lighten it through the middle. Just to give it a little bit different 
texture. Go just driftwood in my dirty brush. out of the stuff. Okay, and I'm hoping this is going to read just a little bit, um, I don't know, just a little bit low brown. I'm not sure if that makes any sense, but Okay, and then I think, just to be different, let's go and do a little bit of pink in the background. Um, I'm going to really rub that off. Let's see what we got going on here. Right now, I think I pretty much hate that. So, um, yeah, not a fan. Okay, so I'm going to rebase coat. All right, sometimes things surprise you. I'm going to go ahead and shade it and pretend like I like it and see um, what happens to it. I'm going to shade with um, Burnt Umber. I need to base that over there. On the other side. I still pretty much don't like it, but I'll keep going. All right, now I'm going to take some bleach sand <clears throat> and I'm going to put some dry brushes on my fence. Dry brushes are where you can see the scratchy application of paint. Okay, and I think I missed near there, but let's see. And then when we shade, that'll take care of sinking everything together. I went ahead and base coated that back out. I did not like it whatsoever. Okay, now we'll shade the fence. Let's shade with a little bit of burnt umber first. See if we like it. Then I'll repeat my shading just real skinny with some, um, yep, charcoal gray. Almost a chisel. Just to deepen that down ever so much. And then we need to shade at the base of our fence. I don't know where that goes in, the part that's just sticking out, um, out of the ground. And that's with charcoal. Don't want anything too strong and white sticking up down there when we, we start putting on our raffia looking stuff. 
Okay, we're gonna get in here and we're gonna dry brush. Let's see if I've got everything all wonky over here. Let's get you more centered um, with neutral gray over our crackle. You want to use shape following strokes. Those boards are kind of canted in just a little bit, so we want to cant our strokes in. Hi, pink. Yeah, we don't want that. Let's see. Probably can just cover that up. Yeah. Go into our driftwood. I'm being silly because neutral gray was the color we chart we crackled with. Every now and again, I can hear people yelling at me from from their painting rooms. No, that's what you base coated with. It proves that 20% thing, though. Okay. So I think I'll go over with a little bit of the um, the char uh, is it charcoal? Yeah, the charcoal gray, especially up here near the roof line. If you're doing this right, you shouldn't be able to really tell what you've done at the end. And we've got two big old birds sitting in front of that as well. Okay, so I'm going to mix the three colors and just go back and do a little bit more. Just kind of want a beached, beechwood kind of looking house. If we're looking at our line art, we're going to have a big old hole in there and all that. <clears throat> so I think we'll call this done. Okay, I'm going to use my little stencil here and make the roof and the whole charcoal gray. If you get some crackle happening because of residual crackle, don't worry about it. It'll just add to the the rough look. Okay, and while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'll go ahead and get a little bit of my shading happening with some black, dirty brush, and while it's wet, go ahead and just stipple that shadow on that side and then blend it. Okay, sometimes things just don't go your way, and I did not like them as bluebirds, and I do not like this as a brown banner. So we're gonna make it the blue that goes with the other banners, and we'll bring our color scheme kind of into the other color scheme. I think that ultimately these colors weren't wrong, but for the banner that I've got, um, the snowflake banner I've got, it's wrong. So this is Prussian blue plus Indian turquoise, which makes just a lovely medium blue. All right, as sad as it is, makes me to say it, I think I don't like the brown either. So I'm gonna go ahead and crackle over the top of what we'll call neutral gray. And I'm gonna make it into a greenhouse. I've got the palettes from my other previous pieces and the balance of the blue and the red and the green and the gold is really what I'm liking. Now I'm going, I'm going to have gold down here so that will be that touch um, and then yeah this I think having this be a green little house right there is going to be a better a better choice. Sometimes you just have to be ruled by the knowns like we know we have to have either like a red bird or a blue bird or at least in my head I do. So we'll go ahead and try to stay off of our little birdies. All right. 
Okay, so we'll get some of this lovely green back here. And I'm going to go shape following. I'm going to go run into my snowbirds here. And then I'll wash my brush out and I'll go back and make it so I don't end up with some kind of nasty heavy line right through the middle of my beautiful little bird's faces. So we're going to get some lightning going up in the middle of our banner. Try not to make all the strokes stop at the same place. Do a little bit more. some of this texture going here. Okay, and then we'll shade with Prussian Blue. And then I'll get everybody kind of synced down together. Nothing like base coating and doing everything twice, huh? Nice big giant floats. And you notice I go back and forth a little bit, can walk it down. By going back and forth, you're keeping the color awake or the, the wetness awake. And um, you can get it to spread a little bit further. Oops. Yeah, not out there. And then we get our little mop out when we think that we need to. I liked the distance that that float traveled, but I didn't like the stripiness of it. Always mop on the clean side of the float. So you mop where um, where the color should fade. So notice that here I'm just, oops, notice here I'm just butting corners, but then I can go in with my mop and I can fix it. So sometimes you just float color just to place it and then you can go fix it with your mopping skills. All right, we'll go into a little bit of our festive green plus um, plantation pine. And now we're going to dry brush. On the different planks. And that'll just brighten this little guy up just a little bit. And I think we can go up one more step. We'll go dirty brush into olive green. Nice long strokes. 
And ultimately we want this house to read as, as a green, but not be like, hello, I'm green. Let's take a little teeny bit of our khaki color. Just neutralize that all up just a teeny bit. All right, now we're going to shade with our black green underneath the eave. Down the sides, cut that corner. Let's go ahead and shade right underneath the hole because there's going to be some of that straw down there and I think it's going to be better to have a little bit of dark to hold that up. You wouldn't normally have it shaded there but I think that that's going to be the right thing. We'll shade behind the birds too. I've cleaned these birds up so many times. Sometimes you just fight with the palette. That's what you're gonna do. Just tickle that to get it to blend. Okay, now we have a, officially got a greenhouse. And now we'll go into our roof with lamp black. And we'll shade. Let's see, so we'll make this overlap over here. Okay, and we'll highlight the roof line where it's coming down. Give it a couple of aged lines. This is an old house, so we don't want it to be too, too, too nice. And we'll accent just a little bit with our um, driftwood. And then we'll go ahead and use the neutral gray in the, this little guy right here. Now let's go ahead and line that. Go with the neutral gray. This is just rough wood. And then we'll shade next to it. Lamp black. sure that fades just a little bit. And I think let's go ahead and walk that over. And I'm fading it as I'm getting over there. We'll take a little of our lamp black on our roof as well. cracked and chipped. And we'll bring some of that down. Just 
just some of these. Oops. And we'll take our um, driftwood. And we'll just go ahead and line right where that sunlight is hitting that. Okay, I want to dry rub just a little bit of warmth inside that birdhouse hole. And so I'm using a milk chocolate. And this is going to be my sign. So I'm just wanting it to be like we left the lights on for you on the one side. These domes, they, they do um, dry rubbing really good big, but little they don't do as well. So I should have used a crescent brush instead. Okay, am I catching that that is some warm going on in there? Yeah, I think so. We, let's put a little bit of this on the roof itself as well. And then I think let's take that round brush out and maybe we'll go ahead and warm up that opening with um, milk chocolate plus khaki. I'm not sure about that side. And so maybe so we're not looking quite so haunted, we'll put some of that on the on the roof as well. And that just gives it a little bit more like a shack kind of look. And while we've got the little sign out, let's go ahead and use some um, milk chocolate plus um, charcoal. Let's go ahead and weather our sign to either side. And then we'll take a little bit of our bleached sand. Don't want this to get too, too bright, and I suspect that adding bleached sand might be about where that breaking point is. Just want a little bit of a texture, so we'll see if that settles in there. It settles in pretty good. All right, I'm going to start building some of this straw. Okay, I've mixed some burnt umber and um, milk chocolate together. I'm going to use my round brush. And then I'm going to base in like little angles and jerks. Okay, and maybe milk chocolate is going to be better. Okay, you just want to kind of create this random movie stuff. Make sure some overlap others. And we can kind of just fill that in just a little bit. Okay, so I think, yeah, milk chocolate's going to be fine. So now we're going to start building all of this bunch of stuff. So you could trace, or I'm just going to kind of freehand. And we'll line it all with that color. OK, and this is spilling out over.
just kind of get some some shapes there. Okay, now we're gonna shade our log. Now that I've got some idea where stuff goes, I'm gonna shade the log with a mix of lamp black and burnt umber. I'm just gonna poke that through. shade the ends of the logs that poke out. And then we'll dry brush with cocoa. going to end up being one of those forest for the trees kind of situations by the time we get all this raffia stuff going here. Okay, now we'll repeat. And this time we'll get, um, now we want to have, I've got um, cocoa plus milk chocolate. go with just cocoa and not be able to tell any difference whatsoever. just have a big old pile of nesting material down there. I don't want it too curly. We don't want it too bright in the middle where it would take away from. Okay, and I'm going to repeat on this other side that I want to get while I'm here in the middle. We do want some attention above their heads. So I've got khaki tan. Maybe I'll just increase that. And then we'll go into our golden straw. Okay, and so then down here on the same side, we can. This is where we've got to be controlled, okay? I say as I rebase coat everything. We want some highlights, like where things would be highlighted, but we don't want to ruin. Our, um, our focal point. We need a piece coming out of here. Okay, so now we'll float underneath the birds to, to sink them in. Okay, that's where we're casting our darkest shadows. We are having cuddle time.
Okay, I'm thinking I may just go ahead and put some uh, real raffia on top of this, and we'll see how that see how that goes. All right, so I've got my letters ready to go. I'm waiting for base coats to dry. I got my home tweet home. I'm gonna go into milk chocolate. stencil with milk chocolate. All right, I'm going to highlight the tops of my stenciled letters with cocoa. So I'm going to march right down the letter. About halfway. In the meantime, I'm basing my hearts with the red color. Okay, we're going to repeat with the cocoa, just kind of more up towards the top, just to kind of get it based. And then we'll go into um, golden straw, right at the very top. You can go across all the tops. And then wipe your brush and then kind of go in the middle and fade. We can also dry brush at the end as well. That's kind of cute. Now we'll go into we'll go into the um, lamp black plus Prussian blue and real washy, and we'll do drop shading. Oops. Do drop shading with the straight lines. really just wakes up the lettering a lot. Okay, now we'll focus on our little lovebirds. And we're going to dry rub. Let's see what are their little faces doing. Aww. Give them a little face. This is Terra Coral. Bring it in from the outer edge here. Go ahead and just put in the shapes of their little feathers. And then we've got a little wing action going on down here. So we'll do it from the, we'll highlight from the front of the wing. Repeat. And then we'll go into coral shell and repeat just within those highlights. Need a bit strong. This is where a little bit of spit comes in, right? My 
I'd have to go back into my base coat color. You gotta wipe out your color. I kind of thought I was gonna do a dry brush, but um, didn't quite work out that way. Now I'll try the dry brush. And we'll go down here and give just a little bit of happiness to that stuff. And I think maybe one more highlight with coral shell. Okay, next we'll take out our big giant um, angle shader and let's let's do country red Who's leaning on who? Okay, this one is leaning on this one. This will make our red our red read a little bit more red. Okay, that's there, that's there. Now we'll take our brush and we'll just highlight right at the tops of the letters. You could do that through the stencil if you wanted to. Um, this isn't hard. some of this stuff sticking out leading to all right we're going to shade the birds a little bit more with soft black just going to define everything just a little bit more. And we'll shade under them kind of great. Let's give them some weight down there at the bottom. So we'll go into a mop. Shade for roundness as well. So I come over, let's see, go over the top here. They're going to be cute when we get little faces on them. Okay. And I don't know that I really want to deepen that. Okay, for whatever reason, I couldn't get my graphite paper to write on this. So I took my chalk, my general white chalk pencil, and I just rubbed it on the back side of my drawing. And then I was able to get a clean trace with no problem. And that will erase with water as well, so it's kind of a neat little trick to know. Okay, so I've got their little beaks on. 
with their eye, eyes on. Let's give the little girl a little couple of eyelashes. if we want to take just a little bit and just give them just a little bit of detail. That was with terra coral. All right, I'm going to use bead and glitter glue. Obviously, my palette's changed 55 times since I started this project. And I want to give some Shazawi to my red hearts. So I'm going to go ahead and give them a little of that. And then we'll give them a little shake. Tap it off into my bead and glitter tray. I won't be able to tap the tape. I think just a little bit of electricity would be a good thing. Okay, so we're going to add a little bit of our greenery here and there. So I'm just going to stick stuff here and there. And I want some different sizes. Okay, so I'll just add a little bit of, make sure you do your glue real flat. cut stuff that you need. Yeah, I think that this stuff is cute. Okay, I need better, these are too thick, these strands, so I'm going to get a bit more shredded one. Okay, I feel like I have officially reached Crazy Crafter because now I'm harvesting specific pieces of raffia to look all fussy. I don't like you. go. And we need one sticking up in the side. Let's peel you off. Okay, see what shakes here. Cute, 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 cute. Maybe just a little hairy, so we'll give him just a little bit of a a haircut. I'm going to take off the little glue bits. Okay, I'm just going to take a red wire and I'm going to thread the various sizes of hearts onto a wire. Just alternate them. And then we'll put them in their places after we get them all on the wire. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll start with one of my little dudes down yonder. Then I'll wrap the wire in a little curl. I'll wrap the wire in a little curl. And then I'll just thread them down near each other and separate them by curls. And try to make them be a little bit oh, random. Some are long, some are short. I'm going to be covered with glitter, but that's okay, it washes off. She who dies with the most glitter wins, right? Okay, now we'll go into a little bit of Indian turquoise. And let's do a little bit of cha-cha-cha here. Just adds just a little bit of something, something, something going on. 
I think that's just the right amount of stuff and do make sure that you varnish before you do all of this stuff that's something that um, I don't get the luxury of all the time because I'm marching through DVDs and things like that then I have to go figure out how to go around everything so always put on the futsy stuff after you varnish okay I used my little hole um, drill it's a handheld drill to start my little brad hole and put some black wire in my sign and then hammered that puppy in there and now I have got a three-dimensional little sign. Next, we need to decide what we're doing with our little with our little futsy stuff here. I'm kind of thinking I want it to go just on the fence. Okay, so this is what I've got is I wound it around the crown, around the edge around some fence posts and um, I think that is just cute, cute, cute. 